All right then, gang. So in this lesson, we're going to focus on setting up the different routes or API endpoints for our Express API. And what we want to eventually do is interact with the database using this API to do things like get workouts from the database and send them back to the clients or add new workouts or delete them or update them, etc. So we're going to set up various endpoints to do this. And I just wanted to run through these first of all in a slide. So we're going to have a get request handler to forward slash workouts. And this handler would get all of the workout documents from the database and send them all back in JSON format to the browser. The post request to forward slash workouts, that handler would create a new workout document in the database. Then we'd have a get request handler to forward slash workouts forward slash some ID where this ID is a route parameter and would represent the ID of a particular workout. And that would get us a single workout document from the database and send it back to the browser. So this would be the workout we get with this ID. And then we have a delete request to forward slash workouts forward slash ID again, where this is the ID of the document that we want to delete. And that would delete a single workout from the database. And finally, a patch request, which would be used to update certain fields inside a workout. And that would be to forward slash workouts forward slash ID again, where this is the ID of the workout that we want to update. OK, so they're the different routes that we need to set up in our application. All oh, right, so we want to set up all of these different routes and route handler functions. Where do we do that in our code? Well, we could do it inside the server.js file like we did with this right here. But what I want to do is not bloat out this particular file and keep this quite clean. And instead, what I'd like to do is create a different file to keep all of our routes in. So what I'm going to do inside the backend folder is create a new folder, first of all, called routes. And then inside here, create a new file called workouts. And all of our different workout routes are going to go inside this file. Now, the way we created a route over here is by using this app right here and then saying dot get. And if we wanted a post request handler, we would say app dot post. And if we wanted a delete request handler, app dot delete and so forth. But we don't have access to the app inside this file right here. So how do we create those routes? Well, the way that we do it is by using the express router. So first of all, we need to require express up here at the top of the file. So we say const express equals require the express package. And then below that, we can say const router and we set that equal to the express dot router with a capital R and invoke that. And that creates an instance of the router for us. And then we would attach a handler to this. So router dot get, for example, and then that could be to just forward slash and we'd have some kind of function that fires when that request comes in. And then at the end of the file, once we've created all of our routes, we can export the router. And the way we do that is by saying module exports is equal to the router like so. So we'd set up all of these different routes. So we might have four or five of them right here on this express router. And then we export the router at the end. Then what we could do inside the server.js file is require that particular router right here that we export with all of these different routes attached to it. So let's do that. I could say const workouts routes and you can call this what you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to name it workout routes since that's what they are. And we set it equal to require and then we want to go into the routes folder. So dot forward slash into the routes folder and then forward slash workouts. We don't need to put the extension. It figures that out. So we have the workout routes and then all we need to do is use those routes on our app. And the way we do that is come down here. I'm going to get rid of this one because we don't need this route anymore. That was just to test the API. So instead I can say app dot use this time and we're going to use the workout routes so we grab them and we paste them in here and basically what that does is it grabs all of the different routes that we attach to the router right here and it basically uses them on the app so if we have a get handler right here it would be the same as saying app dot get right here and then whatever the url is or the path and then the function okay so it just attaches all of those routes to the app. Now, what I want to do as well is I want to 
only fire these routes when we come to a specific path. So for example, I could place in another argument right here before workout routes to specify a path. And that's gonna be forward slash API forward slash workouts. So what that means is when we fire a request to this route right here, then I want you to use these routes and they become relative now. So if this is just forward slash, it would mean when a user goes to forward slash API forward slash workouts forward slash, then we fire this function. Now down here, if I was to do another one, let me just copy that and paste it right here to say hello or something like that, then this would fire this function when we went to forward slash API forward slash workouts forward slash hello. Does that make sense? Okay, so we have that set up right here now. That's all we need to do. So now we can go ahead and start creating these different routes. So we have this one for just forward slash, and this is gonna to be to get all of the workouts because remember, we're gonna to go to forward slash API forward slash workouts, and that should get us all of the workouts, this one right here. So what I'm gonna do for now is just take in the response or the request rather and the response object and then inside here, I'm gonna say response.json to send some JSON back. And the JSON is just gonna have a message on it to say, get all workouts. So this is just a dummy response for now so that when we're sending requests from Postman, we can see a response, all right? So let me do a comment above that to say, this is to get all workouts, all right? And then let's come down here. Now we need one to get a single workout cannot spell single all right so let's say now router.get and this is going to be to forward slash and then colon id this colon represents a route parameter whereby this can change and then we fire a function we get the response and the request object like so and inside here we'll send a response so response.json and i'm gonna add a message property to this to say get a single workout, all right? So I'm gonna show you how we can access this route parameter later on. For now, we're just sending this simple response back. The next one we wanna do is post a new workout. So post a new workout to create one. So we say this time router.post. So we're handling a post request this time, not a get request. And this is gonna be to just forward slash, because again, we have this stuff in front of it. So when we send a post request to this, it's gonna fire this function in a second. So request and response. And then inside here, for now, we'll just send a JSON response. So response.json, and we'll have the message property, which will say post a new workout. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just copy this now a couple of times and paste it down here. So the next one is going to be to delete a workout. And right here, we need to change this to a delete request instead of post, so delete. And this needs to go to forward slash colon ID, where this is the ID of the thing that we wanna delete. And then right here, we can say delete a workout, like so. And then the last one is to update a workout. So let's say update a workout like so. This needs to be a patch request to update something. And that's gonna to be to forward slash colon ID as well. And then right here we say update a workout like so. And that's pretty much done. They're all the routes that we need for now. So we're creating the router. Then we're adding all of these different request handlers onto that router and we export the router at the end. Then we use that router right here for this particular path. So if we just go to forward slash, then it's not gonna fire this thing right here because it doesn't have this in front of it. It's only when we go to this route right here, these routes are added on to the end of it, okay? Cool, so that's pretty much done, I think. And yeah, okay, there's one more thing I think we should do. So you know when you're handling a post request like this, or even a patch request, where we're sending 
data to the server because if we want to add a new workout to the database, we have to send the data for that workout document. We can access that from the request object, right? But we can only access that if we use a bit of middleware in an Express app. And that middleware is express.json. So what I'm gonna do is come above this middleware and say app.use, and it's built into Express, so we can just say Express dot json like so and what that does is any request that comes in it looks if it has some body to the request so some data that we're sending to the server and if it does then it passes it and attaches it to the request object so that we can access it in the request handler so if i save this now i could if i wanted to get access to the request body by saying request dot body now in a post request, all right? Now, I'm not gonna do that for now, but we will need that later on. So I just thought I'd add in this middleware to prepare us for that. But now we have all of these different routes. I'm gonna open up the terminal to make sure everything's still running, it is. We're gonna try these routes out now in Postman. But before we do that, I've just noticed an error right here. These are the wrong way around. It should be request first and then response. All right, so now let's try these out. All right then, so in Postman, I'm inside the Mern app folder. We've got open this request that we created earlier. Now I'm gonna change this back to get. And this time, if it goes to just localhost port 4000 forward slash, if we click send, then we get an error back because now the endpoint is not just forward slash, it should be forward slash API, forward slash workouts, like so. And if we send a get request to this, then we should get a response, which we do. So I'm gonna save that now, okay? So now that's done and in fact let's edit this i'm going to say this should be api forward slash workouts as well all right so now that's saved let's create the next one so we'll do now a get request to a specific um, document so that needs to be to the same endpoint so let's paste that in here but also now with some kind of id on the end so if we send this now then we should see get a single workout back, which we do. Cool, so now I'm gonna save this one as well inside the Mern app folder. Save that so we can use it later. Okay, let's cross those off. The next one I want to do is a post request, and this is gonna to be to the same endpoint. And normally we would add a request body because we want to create a new workout in the database and we need to send that data to the server to do that but we're not going to do that just yet i just want to make sure that the endpoint works so let's send this and see yep post a new workout that works i'm going to save this for later inside the mern app folder all right let's cross that off next let's do the delete request so select delete paste this in and there should be an id on the end of this as well send it and yeah, we get this back, which is correct. So let's save this like so inside the Mern app folder. And then finally, we want to create a patch request. So let's select patch, paste in this endpoint and add some kind of ID, send that. And we can see update a workout comes back, awesome. So these are all working. And now we have these different requests saved so we can test them out later on when we're actually working with data. Next up, we're gonna create a database and we're gonna also talk about Mongoose, which is a package we can install into our application to help us work with the database as well.